So we're trying to find the best way to get the rest of the group in here. Me and Ricky went ahead, but we got Big Bertha with that trailer. We need to figure out how to get her in safely. A little bit more, more, and stop. Welcome to Field Graph Survival Proper, guys. I am Mike Hernandez, the Motorsports and Mobility Director here, and I have... Hi, I'm Ricky. I do events and marketing for Fieldcraft. And I'm Rob, and I do marketing. I am Chief <laughs> Marketing Officer for Fieldcraft. So today we wanted to get um, eyes on basically a question that I get all the time, and that's like, when do I bug out, right? When's the appropriate way to decide, you know, okay, this is my go criteria, let's do this. And there's always a reason in our active environment to do that. And a lot of people, I, I guess, really just don't see that. And the main reason today is wildfires, right? You get that evacuation notice, you know, if you're in California or an area that's on fire and you should bug out, you should leave for your safety. Wildfires, hurricanes, like you have to go, you have to go. You have yeah, to get your go. family and get out of there. 100%. So we talk about EDC, which is person, mobility as a pillar, and then your homestead. It's hard to leave the homestead. Fires, it's one and done, you gotta go, okay? So that's what we're exploring today. We got a really cool route for you that you'll see in this documentary, but I think this is a really good time to show you what we're using, how we're setting up each vehicle because we do have the full media crew with us today and of course the three of us. As part of our preparation, food is a huge staple. I mean, just with anything, like culturally, right? At home as a normal thing. But I, I, I think it's important to differentiate between, let's say survival food, which has its place, right? and what we're doing when we overland and when we can upgrade to, let's say, you know, a 35 liter Dometic that's got a 12 volt source to it, right? And this is supporting six, six people. Six people. For, yeah, about six days. Mm -hmm. It's not a minimal amount of food, right. but we do have a lot of space to store it. 100%. So uh, all of us are running trucks, which is great because we have the, you know, the cargo capacity in the back, so we can carry fridges of varying sizes. So you'll see that as we go through. But I think it's important to note that fridges aren't a necessity, but they, I always kind of have a hard time describing this because they kind of are. Like if you think about a survival situation or if the grid's down, right, you're not gonna be able to locate ice for a cooler, right? So it is a good idea to maybe prioritize this just a little bit on your list. Yeah, really you go from ice management to power management. Right. With power we can generate through other means, ice, you can't if 100%, you're outside. 100%. Ricky, what size fridge do you have in your? I have a 55. Dometic, you have a 55. You're in the big one, aren't you? I got a 75, 75 liter in the bed of the truck and then 55 in the trailer. Nice. <laughs> so we got plenty of space. Dometic did, shout out to Dometic, thank you so much for uh, supplying what we needed for this trip because like we said, there's six of us. Uh, this is different, right? When you have a mobility platform, we're not like sleeping in holes. You know? <laughs> not Kevin. So. Not, sorry, Kev. I think that's important because when you look at what we're talking about for you know the year with Operate the Outdoors, that's that's really what we're doing. This is a recreational trip. My truck, more than anything, is a recreational vehicle. You know, by default, if you have like an overland setup, we're able to camp like this. You have a preparedness rig. Cool. Yeah. So we'll go through this food and consider getting a fridge if you're going to do something like this long term. So we just finished our contingency planning. We just finished our loadout. Shared the uh, checkpoints on Onyx map so we all know where to go. Vehicles are ready, we just have to basically put that trailer and we're out, yeah? And then we're out. All right, nothing else. Let's go crush some miles, guys. We just got off the uh, Bonneville Salt Flats, and you know, when I was planning this this trip, um, I knew that I wanted to make a stop. And when we got here, I was like, "Holy crap!" I did not realize that this was a bucket list item. If you guys are in the area, it's just like unlike anything you've ever seen. So, pretty rad. So now we're just trying to find camp, a good spot. This whole area is super scenic. We're just trying to get away from some of these people. You can see there's one car there and uh, looks looks promising for sure. Good 
Good morning, welcome to the Bonneville Salt Flats. You can see here, this is day one for us. This area is gorgeous. We are dispersed camping here at the Salt Flats. You can't camp on the salt, you do have to come farther off, which is why you see this beautiful landscape. And we have a couple of different shelter mechanisms, I guess you can call them, that we wanna go over. Uh, what are you starting with today? So I'm pulling the Vorshear trailer behind my uh, Tundra, which I love. It's a, it's a great option if you're doing a lot of camping, uh, it's, it's a more expensive option, obviously, and so that's not for everybody, but it's got a cabin on it that we'll show you as well as a rooftop tent so we can actually sleep two separate areas and gives us the opportunity to have a lot of different uh, components yeah. for it. The main concern is the weather, right? When mm -hmm. we're looking at what we're going to sleep in. I know for me, I do have a lot of like thermal liners, whether that's the bag or the tent or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But to give you guys a point of reference, we use acronyms for everything at Fieldcraft Survival. <laughs> IOU is one that you can remember, you need something to sleep in, on, and under. So if you got that figured out, you can mix and match, change things, ground tent, rooftop tent, trailer, RV. I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of ways. So we'll get started with your sleep system. Yeah, let's check it out. So this is the, the Vorshear XOC. So this is their top of the line model for overlanding. It's got the cabin down here. You've got cupboards for storing clothes and whatever else. And then it's got a heater. It's got a air conditioning unit. It's got a fan <laughs> to help moderate all the temperature things. Quite bougie, yes. um, but comfortable. I, right. I mean, obviously no complaints. Rocking the Everly stock sleeping bag in here, but you can throw whatever you want in here. And the ni nice thing for setup for me I shut the door and I walk away. Yeah. Right. I don't have to put it up. The tent, obviously, you've got to open and close. You got to get that deployed. Yeah. Which takes a few minutes. It's not long, but it does take a little bit of time. This, you literally can just shut the door and walk away. And so it's got a a nice pad Looks and like everything. Thick, yeah. And you can just leave it set up too. Like for us who are running yeah. ground tents or whatnot, you have to pack in, pack out over yeah. there. No, I mean, I literally would just shut the good. door and, and, and we can drive away. But it, it provides obviously good protection for the weather, the elements mm. and security. Somewhere. And there's obviously a, a, a hundred different options of yeah. trailers all different price points and, and price ranges from the do-it-yourselves that are relatively inexpensive comparably to hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. for whatever you want. <laughs> but this one is nice because we can take it off-roading. It's built for that, but it's kind of a, a setup. That's one of the things that I really w was looking for was the quickest setup, both from leaving my house to at camp. I got sick of spending 45, 60 minutes or more yeah. setting up everything. Cool. It worked out well. How'd you sleep last night? Well, I slept great. It was a little awesome. warm. Um, <laughs> so I had, to, it was a little I, warm. I had to open up the sleeping bag a little bit, make sure I was uh, getting a little bit of air. Well, cool, man. Thank you. We'll go over to mine then and yeah. check out mine. So I am running a rooftop tent. This works for me because uh, I have a pretty large family. So the three kiddos, the dog, wifey. Rooftop tents, uh, especially the soft rooftop tents, tend to give you a lot more space. This one has an annex, which is why I went this direction. I'm not like sold out on rooftop tents. It's just at this stage in our lives and Hernandez family lives, it works for us, yeah. right? Um, but that's that's my setup. Uh, guys, comment, tell me what you got. Tell me what you would change. Uh, trying to get down to Sawmill Lake. We went and scoped it out first, me and Mikey, to see if Rob could make it down with the trailer. So we're trying to find the best way to get the rest of the group in here. Me and Ricky went ahead because our rig was just a little bit more capable, but we got Big Bertha with that trailer. We need to figure out how to get her in safely. Okay, we got to get the trailer beyond this. It's going to hit on the awning if we keep going. And I'm coming up on a tree up in the front. So a little bit of a tight fit. Yep. <laughs> Back here. That's what your truck I'm worried about now. Well, Rob, wheelbase is a little bit of a, an issue in these tight S-turn trails. So although I do have a longer wheelbase, it is just a little shorter. 
trucks in his. And uh, we're gonna get my truck just as a contingency if we need to get him out of there. A little bit more, more, and stop. Hold. Now the fun begins. Park. as slow as you can. Go back. Uh, when I give you the signal. Right. More, more, and about three feet, and that's good right there. Beautiful day three here in Northern California. Yesterday, we had a little bit of a trek, huh? Yeah, we, we finally made it finally to made California. It. Mm -hmm. uh, but we started in the Salt Flats yesterday. So it was, it was our long drive day. It's like eight hours. Yeah. A little longer with In a caravan, happened. it took us a little <laughs> bit longer. And the last like, oh, I don't know, 300 yards probably took a, a good bit. chunk of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're out here in this amazing secluded camp spot. It was a beautiful morning. Where oh were you at God. for the swim? So <laughs> so I'm sitting I'm sitting in my tent like completely <laughs> dark and I hear this splash in Rob's voice and I'm like is Rob drowning? You know, and I come out and Ricky's all talking to you out here so Rob took a dip. Let's let's start with last night. Last night. It was actually a lot of fun for me. It was a little technical but if you see behind me the trailer's now on my truck and essentially we, I mean we got in just as the sun was going down. It was a beautiful drive in. This spot is I think it's a highly coveted spot and I was able to do some research and find the coordinates for it. And it's not difficult to get in. It's, I would say it's just technical. Yeah. But we had issues immediately with wheelbase on the Tundra, I think is what it was. And not- With the trailer With the trailer, yeah. And not that, you know, we were getting hung up off-road wise. It's just snaking through the path to get in here was difficult. Yeah, the turning radius, turning radius. on the truck isn't great. But then when you throw the trailer onto it yeah. as well, we were basically stuck between two trees. Couldn't couldn't navigate it through and needed to do some fine handiwork to get it out. We decided your truck would be better. Yeah. A, it's more capable yeah. uh, for off-roading, period. But then also shorter wheelbase um, to be able to make some of those tight turns. So we decided, which normally I'm very hesitant to unhook a trailer <laughs> when you're in a tight spot, but... I felt good about where it was yeah, yeah. and being able to get your truck in there. So we unhooked it, mm -hmm. brought your your Gladiator back, took a, a minute to, to line it up <laughs> and, and get it in, um, but then still couldn't make the turn. It was still a little bit too tight and made the decision we thought we could make it. Yeah. And we were inches, like probably four or five inches from being able to make it. Uh, at one point we had the trailer was about two inches from the tree. Yeah. At another point my truck was about literally three literally, quarters of an yeah. inch away yeah. from the tree. And so, yeah, yeah, we decided just let's back it out. We tried a different route. Didn't like that. Backed it out. Mm -hmm. And there was a third route that mm -hmm. was a lot better. Yep. You know what came in huge last night was all the lighting that we had, man. 100%. You know, like the, right. the Surefire handhelds, the the head Maximuses that we were running, the headlamps. All the lights on the vehicles. All the lights on the vehicles. Um, got Casey lights mm -hmm. on all the vehicles, mm -hmm. good partners of ours. Mm -hmm. And it, not just about brightness, it's about right. location. Yes. Putting the light where you need it yep. so that you can be able to see. I'm backing up the trailer with the Flex Era ones, the lights going into the back was so much easier. I could see mm -hmm. and have that area lit up. Seeing lights on the sides, uh, obviously all the front lighting, yeah. it came in clutch. Came in clutch and I'm glad nothing broke. We didn't break anything. Mm -hmm. We kissed the trailer a couple times, but you know, we were responsible. We took care of the environment, which is also a big deal. You know, we're not here trying to destroy everything. But the reason why we're here is for a couple yeah. documentaries, right? I mean, we're shooting a couple really cool pieces of, well, I think it's cool, you know? Yeah, it's something I think everybody heard about the Paradise Fire yes. in 2018. It was a huge deal, but I don't know that a lot of people know that it's, the wildfires here are just still going like Constant. crazy, Every constantly. Year. Yep. They're running into issues all the time. All the time. And that's that's the connection, I think, for us, is when you're looking at this, a lot of the questions we get, and I've said this in our other videos as we're doing this, is when do I bug out? Well, fire is when you bug out. You know, evacuation orders are there. There's a lot of things that happen, though. Like we talked, 550 mm -hmm. people were without power because they, sh they start shutting that down, you know, as a precautionary measure for crews, and but also to stop fires so that you don't have power. Running water becomes an issue because as all that material gets, you know, put into there. So there's, there's a process, water. you know, for 
for us who you know are self-reliant and want to be prepared for this this is going to be really cool so make sure that you guys stick around we're going to have uh, those roll out too so today is kind of our layover we're relaxing to split up the drive time but uh after all said and done we'll spend one night here and then we'll head out to paradise tomorrow yeah Good morning. It is the final day of our shooting and we had to improvise last night. Yeah. Because the campsite we got to was closed on our list, but no worries. I mean, this one's okay. Where did we end up? So we were in Paradise and now we're in Lake Tahoe. And dude, this, this show's been pretty rad. I mean, we've had some pretty epic, you know, scenery and talked about some cool stuff. We were talking and, and we wanted to share this because I, I love gear. Like that's, I think, one of my favorite things to kind of get through and use and, and, and practice with. So we each have individually picked out what was our you know gear of choice this trip and i think we should probably do this every trip because a lot of people always ask how do you do this what are you guys working with ricky what do you think was uh your choice my favorite was the rugged radios i loved yeah. being able to have comms throughout driving because we've driven so much on this trip just being able to let us know if there's a truck pulled over if we're getting off just if we need to get gas and that way we can all kind of communicate throughout the driving and it kind of makes you feel like i was in my own rig with nobody else, so I felt like I wasn't alone Still in there. Part of the group. Yeah, we could tell jokes and everything. It was great. <laughs> Rob, what was your favorite? So, for me, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, but storage and organization is the name of the game. Our, our Fieldcraft duffels, I had things organized and everything kind of put in places with those. Pelican came in huge yeah. with the kitchen setup. I have a little bit of kitchen setup envy from you yeah, yeah, and yeah. have to get my setup a little bit more prepared. And so that was a, a huge one. And then the Vertex stackable cubes. I know where things are. I go there, I open up the right cube and I have my stuff there. And I, I remember to put it back because they're fun to play with. Yeah, they, they really are cool. I think I think my gear choice is, it's a little strange, but uh, I'm gonna say the shovel, the, the DMOS shovel for me was a key piece of kit. What's interesting is I, I'm reminded of when we first started mobility, I had a JK, my, my gray Jeep, and I actually had a full you know, link shovel attached permanently to the roof of my, my Jeep because that's, dude, we always used it and it was easier to use a big shovel when you're digging someone out or, you know, doing the campfire stuff or whatever, usually it's a campfire. And I lost that space when I went to the truck and I was like, ah, I'm not gonna do a shovel. And I had the little flip one and it, it's okay, I guess. I'm super excited to have that full shovel again, which sounds weird, but we use it out here for everything that we're doing. And in the event that we need to shovel someone out, you know, it's it's gonna be exactly it. I think that's all we got for the trip, yeah? Uh, but we have tons of these planned. So this is super exciting for all of us. We're really launching this off, kicking it out. Appreciate you sticking with us this long. Uh, if this is the kind of stuff you like to see, let us know. Mikey, Rob, yeah. Ricky. Ricky, have a good one, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.